All right, everybody, we're going to look at um, going around in circles. Before we do, we're going to start with number zero. Number zero is I'm going in a circle at constant speed. I will have an acceleration inward only towards the center of curvature perpendicular to the path that I'm taking. So it'll be perpendicular. So if you had something that was an oval shape, wherever you are at that point, it'll be perpendicular to your path. Okay, so this is straightforward and backwards, it'll be perpendicular. Now, if you are speeding up, let's say I was moving um, this way around the track, I would also have an acceleration in the direction of motion. So if I have two components to acceleration, I could do, um, I, I would have this acceleration, this acceleration. So the total would be um, almost basically toward forward into the front. Now, if I was slowing down, I would have it a little bit backwards, opposite my motion. So if you're going constant speed though, it'll be towards the center of curvature. If it's a circle, it'll just go towards the center. If it's an ellipse, it'll be pointed towards, it'll be perpendicular to the motion. So there we go. So I want to hit that quick review on that one. Number one here. So we've got um, number one. Hits on a huge idea. Cars round in a circle at a constant speed. Is the car accelerating? Yes, acceleration centripetally is defined by V squared over R. If you are going on a curve, you'll have a centripetal acceleration. In the car, there are three. Here's you driving. There's that window. Here's your Dutch bros, right? And then here's the steering wheel. Here's the gas pedal. Here's the brake pedal. Please don't mix those up. You have three accelerators on your car. Number one is the gas pedal. You can have be moving in one direction and accelerating in the same direction. You have a, an acceleration in the same direction as motion. You'll speed up. The other one is a brake pedal, which will, if you're moving in one direction, the brake pedal will make you accelerate to the other direction behind you. Lastly, the last accelerator you have in your car is your steering wheel. As you turn, you also accelerate. Way to also think about the acceleration piece is that as you are in a car, like how do you know that you're speeding up? Do you feel a change? Do you feel the seat having to push on you to do something? Well, when you hit the gas, you feel the seat on your back pushing you forwards. Okay. When you hit the brakes, do you feel the seatbelt holding you backwards? When you turn a corner, do you feel the side of the car holding you or the side of your seat holding you or having to kind of push off a little bit if you take a corner too hard? That's the key. You're accelerating when your body inside the car is changing. If you're going constant speed and not accelerating, Right? You hear noise and it rattles, but that's about it. You got cheap high school cars. So, um, all right. Car runs a circle while maintaining a constant speed. What's the direction of the net force? Just like this one. Which way is the net force toward the center of the circle? All right. Now, it's a uh, constant speed. Next one. Physics lab, a pendulum humming from the ceiling slowly swings back and forth. Aha. If you, the key to this one is what's the path that it's taking? Number three here. It is taking a circular path. So which way is the acceleration? Up and towards the center. There has to be if it's traveling in a circle. All right, that's number three and number four. At this moment, this is where it gets good. Um, what's the acceleration at point A? This one is a fun one. Okay. So you might be saying to yourself, self, it's on a circle. Ah, it's got to be centripetal. Let's do V squared over R. Okay. What's the velocity at this end point? The velocity at the end point is zero. So your centripetal acceleration is zero. But if I think about that, at that point, does it stay there? Heck no. Which way does it accelerate? It accelerates down the ramp. To review from last unit. Oh, sorry, down the slope, which is still a ramp. So it's mg sine of theta. You have your mg force going down. That mg sine of theta is what drives it forward. This is also a curiosity is that at the bottom, there's an acceleration towards the center, but the, the one that's in the direction of its motion, tangential, will be zero at the bottom because at that point, gravity is neither speeding up nor slowing it down. So that's max speed. All right, that's number four. Let's see what we can do it at five here. Let's do some damage. Net force. Net force is exactly like number three. Net force, number five. F net 
equals ma. Whatever direction the acceleration is, is the direction of the F net. So if your acceleration is towards the center, your F net will also be towards the center. All right, all right, number six. Dun -dun -dun -dun. Bill, what's up, Bill? Rolls the ball towards the string, horizontal planes. So you're looking down at Bill. String breaks free at that point. Which path does it take? This one's all you guys. This one's all you. I put it away, but for you guys, I'm gonna bring it back out. As soon as it doesn't have that centripetal force acting on it, what path does it take? Oop. Straight line. So in this case, what would that letter be? D, I think. I guess you'll click it and find out. What path will this take? So now this is, it swings horizontally, right? If there's no gravity, which path would it take? Path C, but is there gravity? Yeah, so which one's it gonna do, D, E, or F? It cannot do F, because it has a horizontal speed. E, no. All right, if you said E, let me know what you're thinking. Cat dozes on a stationary merry-go-round. And a radius of, now we're doing some math, people. Let's go. Okay, we got number eight right here. Um, mm -mm. Cat does on a stationary merry-go-round. So you got a cat sleeping on a merry-go-round. Radius away is 4.7 meters. The, the operator of the ride brings it up to a proper, I would like to point that out, proper turning rate of one complete revolution every 6.6 .6 seconds. Okay, what is the least coefficient of static friction? Okay, well, they got weird on me. Ready? Oh, so notice, there's not like a straight path to this. So we gotta think, how does time relate to friction? I don't know. We're gonna probably use this radius. Let's just start with what we know, okay? So we have acceleration as V squared over R. We're going in a circle, okay? So we know R, did they give us V? Ah, they didn't. So maybe let's go down that path first. So velocity is two pi r, distance around divided by time. So the velocity is two times pi times radius, 4.7 over time, 6.6. .6. I know velocity. Okay, so let's just get a number. I'm just gonna write it down. So now we have less to think about. So we got two times 3.14 times 4.7 divided by 6.6, 4.47. So the velocity is 4.47. Now look, we haven't done everything. Okay, but we at least have some information that we can work with. So let's go back to our initial thought. V squared over R. Do I have V now? Yes. Do I have R now? Oh, I can find acceleration. Who knows how it relates to the answer? How does acceleration relate to friction? I don't know. But we're going to kind of take it a step at a time. V squared over R. Velocity, 4.47. Radius, 4.7. It's going to get an acceleration. So 4.47 squared. So divided by 4.7, get 4.25, 4.26 is probably a better answer. Cool. That is not telling me everything. Okay, I have acceleration. We now have a game to play. We got to somehow connect acceleration to static coefficient. So let's just start with acceleration. Do I know F net equals MA? Yes. I don't know mass. That is mildly concerning my acceleration is 4.26, okay? So just knowing that, kind of closer. We're gonna switch up colors. We're gonna look at the forces. So when it's right here, it's got a weight force. So I'm gonna do a side view, okay? It's got a weight force, has a normal force, and then going towards the center is friction. Here's my top-down view, has a friction force. So if you look, the up and down cancel, but nothing cancels that friction force. I got a force towards the middle. So what is my F net for my picture? Friction. Okay. So now, let's get that. There we go. Friction. Equation for friction is mu times normal. Okay. Oh, ooh, there's a mu. Mu. That was horrible. Mu times normal force. Do I now have something I can work with here? I get um, UMG equals 4.26M. Please notice what happens to your Ms. They're gone. So you have mu times 9.81 equals 4.26. 
divide, solve, stick it in, you're done. That you need that much stat coefficient, or the cat doesn't gonna stay, people. Okay, I'm not gonna stay. All right, number nine. Student weighs 661 on a Ferris wheel. Ferris wheel goes like this. Okay. Ferris, a student who weighs, so their actual weight, so number nine, is 661, which means they have a mass divided by 9.81. I'm just going to do that one. Their mass is 67. 4 kilograms. I just divided it to get their mass. So they gave me information at the beginning. I know I now know what the kid, right? Um, at the high point, the magnitude of the normal force is 559. At the high point, okay, does the student feel light or heavy? Well, watch this. When they normally stand on a bathroom scale, it says 661. The bathroom scale, when they're sitting on the ride, now says 559. They are lighter. Huh. Okay. What's the magnitude at the lowest point? Wow. So this thing is going to go to constant velocity. Okay. As the, as the kid sits up here, there's a normal force going upwards of 559. There's a weight force going downward of 661. So my F net would equal... The difference, 41, so that's 102, 102 newtons. Well, let's look at what F net equals MA. In a circle, it's MV squared over R. My F net is 102. Well, on a Ferris wheel, the radius is always the same. If it wasn't, you're falling um, or watching Spider-Man, right? And so, um, and the V will be the same because it goes constant speed. So that means the F net at the top of 102, it'll have the same F net at the bottom. But their weight force is still 661. But at the bottom, I have to have more force towards the center, so my normal force will be bigger, 763 newtons. Now, there's step one. Step two, part C. The wheel speed's double. I feel like it's just getting sloppy now. What's the magnitude of the... the, the what? Okay. Let's talk shop here. If you were to double the speed, right? If you were to double this velocity right here, you stick a two in. You square it. You get four. So what's going to happen to this number if I double the speed? What will my F net be now? It'll be four times as much. Wow, that's a lot. Okay, we're going to make some space next to this guy. So now when you're at the top, your weight force is still 661. It hasn't changed, guys. Um, but now your F net's 408. So that means your normal force will be smaller. So it's going to be 253. So now all of a sudden you feel a lot lighter. The way to think about this, as the thing spins faster, you're going to be even lighter at the top. Now at the lowest point, ready? Your weight force is still 661. That didn't change. Earth didn't go, oh, you're in a first wheel. I'm going to go easy on you. No, it just doesn't care. But look, the normal force is bigger. But if my F net's now 408, it's going to be 1,000. Oh, gosh. That's hard math to do. There it is. 1,069 newtons. Um, now, all of a sudden, at the bottom, you feel even heavier. Are you actually heavier? No, but you're on a bathroom scale, so you feel heavier. Big 1-0. Oh. I'm trying to remember how many problems we have on this one. Um, number 10 and number 11 are our last two. Number 10. Circular motion addict. That is the official name of I love going to the circus. All right. Circular motion addict has a mass of 66 kilograms. Um, we are in a vertical circle of radius 10. Okay. At a constant speed of 6.3 meters per second. What's the period of motion? Period is time. 
shucks. Velocity is 2 pi r over period. So period equals 2 pi r over velocity. So that's 6.28 times our r divided by our velocity. We get the period. Okay. What's the magnitude of the normal force of the attic? Why do we keep calling this? This is getting weird. All right, let's do part B here, not part B. So we got ourselves um, our uh, enthusiast. Um, here we go, here we go. Um, what's the magnitude of the normal force from the seat when they're where? Top or bottom? What does it say? Go through the highest points. And here's what's tricky. On a Ferris wheel, you're on a seat. Oh, where's my pen? You're on a seat and you're sitting on top of something. You're not upside down. That'd be a sweet Ferris wheel, but you're sitting on top of it. So while you're up there, you have a weight force and you have a normal force. Your normal force would be smaller because you have to have more towards the center. So here, F net equals MA. Well, your acceleration in the circle is V squared over R. Okay, now my F net is W minus N. So mg minus n equals mass times velocity squared over r. Now, I can't cancel out m's because it's not in everything. I'm going to plug it all in. v, 6.3, squared. Don't forget the squared. I always forget the squared. Divided by r. Solve for the normal force. Okay. You should get a number smaller than w. If it's bigger, you did the math wrong. Now when you go to the lowest point, let's do the lowest point. So now you're at the bottom here. You have a weight force, your normal force will be bigger because you need more force towards the center. So now F net equals MA, V squared over R. But now it's the big guy minus the little guy. There you go. Plug in your values again. Um, let's do number 10. Awkward. Oh, no. One of you is going to tell me. Um, a ball is rolled off the edge of a table. Schmear. Left field. Here we go. Um, which ball hits the ground first? I don't know. I actually don't know. Both of these balls, when they're in the air, experience mg. They both experience mg. They both in the y direction, initially have a velocity of zero. So in the y direction, they both have the same force, they have the same F net, so they have the same acceleration, and they have the same vertical velocity at the beginning, so they hit at the same time. Now, do they go different distances horizontally? Totally do, but vertically, they travel the same. There we go, guys, thanks for tubing in. Keep it real, you guys are awesome. Seriously. Is it cool?